Uh-oh. Junk all over the place. It's hotter than the blazes in Florida right now. So I came over here to my thermostat, kicked the fan to on, and waited, and waited, and waited, and waited, and waited, and waited. Nothing ever happened. So, went ahead and kicked the thermostat to cool. Okay. I can certainly hear the Freon going through the metering device. In this case, I believe it's TXV. We've got no fan motor in here. Now there's two kinds of fan motors. I think one of them's called a PCS. Is that right? It's just a regular old fashioned fan motor with a capacitor. The other ones are electronic ones, which, in variable, which are variable speed and X13. Variable speed ones are very expensive and very troublesome. The X13 is troublesome. The factory ones are. The condenser outside's kicked on. So this coil is gonna to start to freeze up and the condenser outside is gonna hit limit switches to kill the compressor so I don't blow it up. But I'm gonna yank this panel off quick and look at the fan motor. Okay, here's the fan motor and it's not running. Sometimes you can get in here and give these things a bit of a spin, but I can tell you by how hard it is to turn that thing that this X13 motor is indeed bad doesn't surprise me. I've had to fix a million of those. So I'm gonna turn the power off to this and pop that motor in. Okay, the items that you need, or the items that I use, are Chick-fil-A sweet tea. This stuff here is a lubricant. Don't get too excited. That says Jack of all sprays. I got confused on the same thing. I thought it was multi-purpose. Emery cloth, an adjustable wrench, and I use a socket set and my Android phone. God, this thing is heavy. Ugh. Well, this is the lovely part where I forgot to videotape pulling this fan motor squirrel cage out. Basically, what you need to do is take a few pictures of your wiring harness, make note of where they plug in, and take a few screws out then the entire assembly should just slide right out in most cases without trouble. This motor is shot for sure because it will not, it is, it is NFG big time. Take your emery cloth. I usually do about this many inches, centimeters, whatever. And you take this emery cloth and you go to town on this shaft. Do not ever try to hammer these out of here because all you're gonna do is mushroom the top of that shaft and that's gonna get stuck down in the hub and you'll never get it out. The way I'm doing it works 99% of the time without a problem. The important part about the emery cloth step is to get it as shiny as you can and get the emery cloth down low in that hub where the shaft and the hub are like this. You wanna get it down in that crevice as low as you possibly can and just work it like Missy Elliott. And I'm looking at it, kind of rubbing my fingers on it. Looks really smooth. I'm getting down really low on the crack. I'm even getting part of the hub nice and cleaned up. That's a win-win. Okay, we look good and shiny now. There's one little spot right here that needs some attention. All right, that looks pretty good. So we'll put the emery cloth on the floor. Now the next step is to take the set screw out of the side of the hub. This is a pump down wrench. It's got four different quad things and they're this one's kind of roughed up but they're a ratcheting wrench and they've got different attachments for the king valves on the condensers one side of these this one right here is the exact size to fit the square bolt on this hub settings hub set screw oh, I just told you the wrong one must be this one here now see I'm starting to lose it there we go I'm always surprised at how many HVAC techs 
don't know this. I mean, I've been working with guys, I'm like, just grab your pump down wrench and jam it on that screw. Oh, I didn't even know that fit. So we're gonna ratchet this. Am I tightening? Yeah, I'm tightening. Yeah, lefty loosey, Jason. Once you break it loose, it usually comes out by hand. I usually just take them all the way out. Now, we're gonna take our jack of all sprays. If I can reach it. And I'm going to pretty much just hose this thing down and let it sit there and percolate. Percolate, percolate, percolate. Klein makes a shaft, motor shaft wrench, and you can see the claws on this thing are thinner than the body, so you can reach in underneath condenser fan blades and get underneath there and hold that shaft. And the reason for that is because there's two flats. Universal aftermarket motors have one flat. The original motors usually have two flats on this shaft. That allows you to grab the shaft with a wrench. So let's flip this million pound thing over. But since I can hardly see anymore, well, these are 7 16ths, it appears. They're whatever that size is. By the way, a quarter inch socket set like this, it's in a little case. You can jam these like under your seat, and behind your seat. And I've probably got 10 of these things floating around in different places and they come in really handy when you're not working on big stuff, you're just working on crap like this. So we'll take all these bolts out of here. All you really need to know on these, all these X13s are gonna have this connection set right here. It's like a four and a five terminal. All you need to see is this sticker and what horsepower you have. And this is a three quarter. The one I did earlier today was a one third horsepower. And uh, I think they're up to, I don't know, one horsepower or so at least that I've ever seen. And that's all you really need to know and how your wires hook up. The rest of it I'm gonna show you right now. I'm gonna flip this back over now. So now the blower assembly and the motor is just floating around in here. And I'm gonna take my wrench. So I'm gonna find the flat on here. It's right there. Hold the blower wheel and now you see how easy that spins. And what I do is I spin it back and forth about a thousand times kind of gets things rolling, gets that oil circulated down inside the hub. Let's go back and forth until you get sick of it. Take a swig of your sweet tea. Put that over by the socket set, so if I spill it, it goes in the socket set. Spray some more Jack of All sprays in there. This is really good stuff. They sell it in big cans. I'll also put a link if I can find this somewhere, I'll put a link in the description. This stuff works really good. If you say that too fast, it doesn't come out right, by the way. I was telling my wife about it, Mrs. GBG. I said, I got this new product today. It's called Jack of All Sprays. She's like, what? So I had to say it slower. I usually try to keep some kind of a bench or a table or something around. I set this corner of this assembly on the on whatever table I'm working with. In this case, it's gonna be this tote. And look at that, the thing fell right out. I thought that would be more dramatic. So what I'm gonna do now is take this belly band off completely. There's a pinch bolt right there. I usually go ahead and put some more jack of all sprays on it. And I think this is 7 16 I don't remember for sure. Oh, look at that. Okay. So I'll just, yeah, it is 7 16 And I'll just use my little adjustable wrench here and loosen this duber up. If I can get it to cooperate with me. Here is my new, this says Gentech Evergreen. 207E. Get this motor out of the box. Get all that crap on the floor. The floor. 
Now I got another big mess to pick up. I'm going to take this sticker off of the terminals. This will be where the wiring harness will connect into. And as you can see, it's identical. We've got four pins down here, five at the top. The top is the speed taps. We had white and number four and blue and number two. And then the, heart, the main harness for the power and ground goes right here. And this has some dents in the side that usually you can kind of line up that belly band with and it works out good. This thing on here first. Slide it down to about the midline of the motor. I'm going to take these. These are going to mount so your rubber bushings are opposite of the shaft. Put these in there. Sometimes you got to use an adjustable hammer. Sometimes you got to, you don't want one of them over your controls, so we're going to spin this a little bit, spin the motor in here. That. So it's in between two legs. I like to grunt and puff and puff while I'm doing this because it makes me feel like I'm really doing a nice job. And there, there we go. So you just tighten this until it's snug and until it feels like it's about to snap the bolt, which I've done several times. And I'm going to take some of my jack of all springs, soak down the shaft of the new motor. You can put never seize on there. I've never done that. Well, maybe I did it one time and it seemed like it made a bigger mess than it was worth. When you have this blower assembly all pulled out, if you notice a lot of gook in your fins, you can take this out in your driveway and just hose the whole thing out and hose all the gook and dog hair and cat hair and chunks of hot dogs or whatever you got in there. Just hose it all out really good, clean it up, and oil your shaft. Yeah, we're going to turn this thing over now. Also, these things are really sharp. You can cut yourself. In fact, if you're a DIY person, you probably will cut yourself the first time you ever do this. Now, here's another really important part. This is going to be the outside of this is where my wiring diagram is. So I know I want my electrical connections facing that way, and they're not. I'm just going to spin this and re-clock it. That should work right there, looks like. I'm going to start our bolts back in this. Sometimes you can just smash the bolts in there and it really doesn't hurt too bad if you cross thread on this little tight up. Because this might be the last motor you ever have to do. I'm going to go around and just get them all snug first. And I don't know if this makes any difference or not, but what I like to do is, because I'm so used to working on cars too, I get them snug like that, and I just give it a, I don't know, an eighth of a turn. Like that, and I do it in a crisscross pattern, as much as I can, and about an eighth of a turn. That'll hold it in there. Now we're going to invert this thing again. And we're going to line up the bolt hole for the set screw in the hub to the flat on this new motor. Now remember this new motor has one flat. You want to center this blower wheel in between these two bits of shrouds on the side until it spins freely like that. If you can't get it to cooperate, just grab your wrench and grab that shaft and spin the shaft on the flat while you're pushing the lower wheel. And there we go. We've got it pretty well centered now. And we'll take our set screw put it home. And you can use either an adjustable wrench or the ratchet pump down wrench if you have one. Or you can use, I think, an eight-pointed socket. Will also work for this, probably like three eighths. All right. Okay. Got it hand tight, and I'm going to use my pump down wrench to seal the deal. Now you can bust this bolt off too. You just want it tight, and then a little bit more than tight, whatever that means. Evergreen. 
motor installed, blower wheel nice and centered, it rolls freely, makes no noises. Wiring harness should be in the correct spot. So let's go reinstall it. I want to make sure you have all your wires up out of the way. Two tracks. One track on that side, one track on that side. The little flats on that squirrel cage slide right in there. Sometimes you gotta grab them from the front side a little bit and support them. And guide those flats up into the track. And there it goes. Some guys like to connect the wires first. This one's pretty easy. You can see them really well. Got her all wired back up. I'm gonna put it in the scroll cage first. There's two screws that does that. And we're gonna push the one side up and anchor it to the cabinet. Right there. I'm gonna take the other one, put it through the ground screw. And very delicately, that wasn't too delicate. Oh boy, well, you know what? We're just gonna wrap it up a little bit. It won't hurt anything as long as it's grounded. And then we'll do it again. There we go, that works. As long as you don't tear it up, it works. All right, I got the camera on the blower wheel. I'm gonna go turn the power on and show you what this thing does on startup. It's pretty cool. There it went one direction. Now it should wind down to a stop and go the other direction. And what it does is it detects the load. There it goes in the other direction. And I think the direction it's currently going in is the correct direction. Now it's going to stop again. And now it's happy right there. So I'll throw the cover back on. And then we're going to clean the outside coil and check the evaporator. There we go. Okay, there's been a whole lot of videos floating around this time of year about cleaning condensers on air conditioners. For a DIY homeowner, you do not need to take the fan top off you're asking for trouble those things don't always go back on the right way you've also got to take the side cover off to get those off it's just not worth it you need a water hose no soap at all and what i do is first stick your hand above this fan it should be blowing out you know a couple of feet away from the top if it's not if it's blowing very slow not forcefully enough and the air feels very very warm and this outside coil is is definitely plugged up now this one's not dirty but I'm gonna show you exactly how I clean them just for grins the first thing you do is you get a leaky water hose like this with an adjustable tip one of these little bullseye tips that screws onto a trigger hose and you set it not at full force but about not like that. Kind of a fan. Keep your hose perpendicular to the coil. As perpendicular as you can. And start at the top. Working on like a couple inch section. And go all the way to the bottom. You don't necessarily have to turn it off to do this either. If you feel safer doing that, that's fine. Remember these things work in the rain all the time. Go over the next four inches, start at the top, and go down, and then sometimes at the bottom, you'll see a lot of dirt out of those drain holes. You don't really have to take the top off and suck all the leaves and stuff out of there until it gets way, way too deep. It's just a couple inches, they'll rot and they'll drain out of the holes anyway. A lot of that stuff is a waste of time. I'm gonna hose some of the dust off the outside of this thing while I'm at it. And I'm just gonna go all the way around the whole outside of this thing, doing the same thing. 
the way to know if it's working or not is to stick your eyeballs down in there and the squirt the hose from the outside. And if you can see water, see the water going through. Water's going through, it's uh, it's working. A lot of guys will say things like, I always take it apart and clean it from the inside out. I don't want to push all the stuff in there deeper. Well, that doesn't really happen. I mean, it could theoretically happen on a couple of different units, but this unit here has an open coil. The other ones that have the louvers on them are called armored coils. And all you have to do with those is aim your hose in the same direction as the louvers. So if this had vertical louvers that were facing that way, I would just do it like this inside the louvers. It's really, really unusual to push more stuff inside the coil. I've only ever had to take, in 20 something years, I've only ever had to take maybe three of them apart to really clean them. And they were usually around a lot of dogs that dug holes by the unit or next to dryer vents. The dryer lint gets sucked into them. But this is a good homeowner way to do this without getting yourself cut or stock. When you get done with this, the air blowing out of the top of this fan is going to be noticeably cooler for a while until this coil dries off and heats back up. This coil out here is what's removing the heat from inside your house. The fan is extracting it and blowing it out to the atmosphere. And uh, there you go. Real simple way to clean your condenser that anybody can do. Okay, here's the evaporator. It's got some chunks of stuff in there, but it's not not really dirty enough to clean right now, so I'm not going to really investigate that too much. When you can see those tubes in between the fins, it's usually okay. Okay, I took the old ratty filter and pried down this bottom lip of the cabinet, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to seal off this gap in the air handler right here with some super sticky mastic tape. And then there's an accommodation here, here, to slide filters in on all these stands. And I'm just gonna get some 24 by 24 filters and I believe that'll slide right in and out of there. And I won't have to worry about dealing with this damaged cabinet. Um, another trick, I've got my drain set up to run outside, of course. When you have these float switches like this, which I don't have hooked up because we're just in a garage, you can use this as a you can kind of use this as an access port. Well, this one, the line set's in the way, but you can see how the float switch comes out of that cup. You can use this as a bleach access, or what I like to do is pour vinegar down this to clean out the interchange here in the pan. I pour about a half a gallon of vinegar down this, let it percolate for a few minutes, especially if it's already plugged up. And then I take a gallon jug like a milk jug and get the hottest water out of the tap that I can get and pour about three or four gallons of water down through there really slow if you go outside and watch your drain you're gonna see a big white or black or whatever color snot snake come out of that pipe if you can give me a thumbs up on this video I'd appreciate it if I've helped you at all with this x13 motor situation or if you have any comments and questions about it Drop a comment down below. I'll make sure that I read it.